They said <laughs> it's back. <laughs> and I mean, I'm back. And um, with the regular cohorts, it's been a long time since we all like have been here together. Yeah. Together yeah. again. Without people being sick. And stuff. Or yeah, right. Those, <laughs> all not me. I we clearly, are, last week, I said I was drunk. Too drunk to come. Yeah, and I have a good reason last week, too. But we are also joined by our heterosexual for the day, uh, Miss Jamie. Oh, just for today? Yeah, it's just for today. Well, that's your call, girl. <laughs> second coming. Yeah, it's your second time here. And we and I have not met you, so welcome. I'm excited to have you. Thank you. As we all are. Um, yeah, I wasn't here last Monday. I wasn't in L.A. Pride. Well, somebody said it was because oh, you were recuperating from LA Pride. No, I had um, I had this big staff meeting on Sunday at Martine. I'm just getting this out there right now to announce this and get it done. Um, because I had this big. I've worked at the same restaurant for like eight years, and I had this big staff meeting on Sunday and made an announcement to the staff because I put in my resignation at Martini's after almost eight years. Wow. Wow. Breaking news! (laughs) So the announcement went to the staff on Sunday and then Sunday night was kind of like a little bonding because I have some really close friends. So Monday was a me day. It was like one of those days that you had to reflect and all that. So that my apologies that I was out here last Monday, but and Aaron didn't even know this because I was keeping my mouth shut. (laughs) What's What's on the horizon? Um, I don't know. <laughs> I guess we're going to find out. Wow. No, I know because I, I have, I mean, because I work at the center, so I have, like, the center, and that's gearing up for a lot, and then, um, it's just kind of like that time, you know, like, you, like, when you're in something, like a rut, and something just hits, and you need to take, like, that, you, said you just need to do it, I feel like I need to do it. I need that next challenge in my life, and just kind of need to, like, row. Ah! What is that? Oh, is that? oh my god! Oh my god! That's oh, yeah, no, oh my god. The, uh, the owner of Martinis. <laughs> I thought it was a steak or something. Yes, oh my god! That's a sign. Yeah, it's a sign. Great. Yeah, I want my job back. <laughs> just kidding. No. So I just. Uh, oh my god! That makes. Means- the doors are just opening for that you. Really is scary. Yeah, right. My parts, I pinned it down. So. <laughs> yeah. So, well, I mean, we'll see. I mean, I, I have my eyes, you know, just kind of going, and I don't know. I'm gonna take a week after that final week is in two weeks, uh, taking a week for myself. So I may disappear for a week, uh, and again. people, ju- yeah, right. <laughs> and that's that. So. That's enough for me. What about you guys? <laughs> but that's going to be like the week before Pride that you're going to disappear? No. I have uh, this week and then I have next week. So my last day at Martini's will be the Saturday before the 4th of July. Mm. Yeah. So it'll be a little emotional for me, I think. Um, you know. That'd be hard. But you'll be you'll be great. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'll go get drunk that night. <laughs> you know. What's up with you all? What you do? I was gone all week. Um, I left Tuesday morning to go to the river. Um, the family's got a little river house out there, and I've been there. Oh, um, where? Um, in Blythe. So it's right on the border of Arizona, California, like three and a half hours hours away, something like that. But I was basically out in the sun all week, just drinking. On rafts? You were in the and, sun? Yeah. Yeah, right. Really? Uh, I'm so And great you're right part now. Latin? Yeah. yeah. I'm did Mexican. You, did you I'm ride the right rafts now. down the river? Yeah. yeah. We were floating so a bunch cool. of the time and everything like that. Did you like tie all the rafts together and, and have yeah. your cocktails and a floating cooler? Uh, yeah, we had we had a nice yeah. little cooler and everything <laughs> like that. And we had a sea dude that would like go back to like the boat and like grab like more beers and then come back sh- to the people who were floating. Are you sure like, you weren't born into a pack of lesbians? That's like a favorite activity. Oh yeah, it's so fun. When did you get back? I got back uh, last night. And was your whole family there, or did you go with like friends? Um, like- it was um, like so. My brother came down from Slow, and my parents. San Luis went, Obispo. Yeah, my brother goes to college up there. Oh, nice. And he's back up now for summer school, so he's only down for like the week. So we just went to the river. Um, Julian went out for a couple days. Oh. And then um, we had a bunch of family friends come out for the weekend. So there was like fifteen of us. Yeah. There, um, like for the weekend, we had like a cornhole tournament and stuff like that. It was what? fun. What the fuck? Cornhole oh, cornhole is fun. Fun. Beanbag my, toss, basically. Oh, because uh, my brain went completely <laughs> to a different way. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> Mine did, too. I was like, there's wait a, a minute. There's an angled board in a hole or something. Yeah, there's an angled board, and it has a hole in it, and then you have these little square beanbags, and you throw them, try to get them like in the Yeah, you guys here yeah exactly. Yeah, okay. Oh, is it a drinking game? It I mean, you just drink could, while you're playing. Yeah. Like, it's like, <laughs> like bocce ball. Yeah, it's a very, like, <laughs> yeah, so it's just like a slow-moving game, like horseshoes or something like that, where you're just kind of, like, hanging out. It's a beach game. Interesting. Huh. 
And Jamie, you are a vice principal. Principal? 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 Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> and you're not on summer vacation yeah, yet, right? I am not. I'm in the, like, finals are happening right now as we speak. So uh, I, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm over it right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You did need, like need, need a drink. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're leaving for Vegas the Friday after. So, like, so graduation is Thursday night. We're leaving Friday morning, so. Really? That's the plan. Do you have any other big plans for the summer? My niece is getting married in slow. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's so, so we'll awesome be, up there. We'll it be is up beautiful. The coast, yeah. Oh, cool. That's our main vacation this year. Oh, Rough year? No more so than you. Well, yeah, I mean, budget cuts. <laughs> Every year uh, there's yeah. more cuts. So, it, yeah, I mean, it's harder and harder. And I'm, I do master schedule, which means I'm putting together all the all the uh, classes and where they fit during the day so it's when you cut a teacher you're losing those five classes that teacher teaches and what do you really what do you think because I think in the news last week too there was a um, I think out of like Sacramento or somewhere in northern California like a teacher of the year was let go in the budget cuts I mean does that happen a lot in San Diego or like people who are yeah. like the award Really? Yeah, um, it, I can only speak from my district directly, but um, we do everything by seniority, and it's because the union then can, it's more, it's easier for them to say, well, this is how to keep it fair and equitable all the way across, and we don't have to deal with, well, you're a good teacher, you're a bad teacher, and defend people who are being accused of being a bad teacher, and other people saying, no, they're not a bad teacher, so they just, it's straight seniority. So if your teacher of the year is the bottom math teacher in your in your like school, school or in your district then yeah and right now it's um everybody's bumping so uh in our district if you got your pink slip um but you have less seniority than someone else then someone else could be coming from a different school so if at that school they don't have a position for math teacher they shift all over the district all right so uh, by year by year are the pink slips like decreasing or are they increasing like I, I feel like the last two years they've increased. Really? Yeah. And I'm hoping hmm. it levels out at some point. Yeah. How many students are in a class? Um, right now we're looking at 40. Well, that's a lot. Yeah. It and a it, lot. it's not every class winds up that big, but that's that's kind of the average basic freshman English, for instance, would be 40 to 1. Well, that's a lot. Yeah, that's a lot. Hmm. Well, that's a lot of people to socialize with. <laughs> Yeah, it's really fun That's for the teacher to try it. to manage that oh, yeah. socialization <laughs> too. It's, uh, well, you know, I'm looking at the student's perspective. Um, and I watched last week's show too, which was very interesting. And Dustin, we need to work with you on your hands. <laughs> so I try to, you need uh, more hands. I, I was trying to use them a little bit more. But <laughs> I was trying not, I just more. noticed that I'm uh, hands flying yeah, everywhere. Good, talking with hands is good. It's a form of communication. <laughs> but I was watching it because I was very interested in, because you were going to a fundraiser. That's at right. the Alchemy, mm -hmm. which was the Dining Out for Life uh, location this past year, oh, FYI. Cool. Um, but it was, a, and I found it interesting because it was a fundraiser for, um, like, for staff members because a lot of hospitality industry, like in that industry, don't have health insurance. Right. So it was called the it's called the Front Burner Fund, and this was their first event. And Alchemy actually started this fund. They got a tax ID number. Oh, they had a wildly nice. successful event. So. Well, the, all the money goes to, to the back of the house staff, but this fundraiser in particular went to their chef, a really nice guy who had to have a serious eye surgery. So he was there with his eye patch on, and so the money went to go towards his surgery and his care because he doesn't have health insurance. And there's a lot of that in back of the house staff. So, so is it an emergency fund for people of the hospitality industry? Correct. So the first one's okay. going towards him, but they're going to continue to do them, and the money's going to go to be pooled to go towards back of the house staff and various restaurants. It, like applying yeah. for it right. or something like so that. So there were about eight really solid, great restaurants there. It was it was just awesome. So they had stations and the restaurants would set up in the restaurants. So they had about eight different restaurant stations inside. And then they rotated food trucks outside. So one would roll out and the other one would roll in. So they had five different food trucks and they had live music. And how, was, how, was, how was the crowd? Was it a good? It was a really diverse crowd. It was mixed. There were a lot of restaurant people there. Yeah. Um, it was hmm. It was really cool. Uh, Frank Family Winery, one of my wineries, donated some wine for the raffle, and people donated wine, and all the restaurants donated their time and their food, so 100% of the money. They charged $25 at the door to go in, and that included all your... How much did they charge? 25 bucks. Oh, I think said 100 No. It, it, it was... <laughs> like, I felt like, you know, I would have even paid that. It was so cool. Um, 
but it, that went towards all the food you could eat and one drink ticket. And other than that, you bought yeah. drinks, but the drink money went towards the fund as well. So it was you, a very successful event. Do you guys think that, um, like I've worked in that industry for like what, almost 15 years now in the hospitality industry and the restaurants and bars. Do you think it's a uh, that small businesses, you know, like if it's a restaurant and bar, should they be providing like health insurance? or some type of insurance for like the staff members? It's hard to say. There's so many laws and rules on little businesses. It's already hard for them to compete with the big guy and you put stipulations on like you have to provide this to your staff and that to your staff. It might just rule them out of being able to succeed and keep the doors open. So a lot of restaurants yeah. just, you know, are month to month right now, very little profit, just True. trying to make it by. So I think if the government said you have to do this and a lot of them might have to shut their doors down, and hospitality, I mean, I've worked in this industry my whole life, and I think a lot of back of the house is kind of used to it. I'm not saying they well, I don't, deserve I, to have health you, insurance. But you also keep saying back of the house, and there's a lot of people that are also in the front of the house right. that do not have any type of They insurance. make a lot like, more money than the back of the house, though. It's been, maybe not true, the hostesses, that's a good point. but yeah. front of the house makes a lot more money in a short amount of time. Yeah. And a couple dollars over minimum wage. I think it'd be awesome if places could do that and everything like that and provide yeah. health insurance for everyone. I just think... I mean, I obviously haven't looked into it or anything like that, but I feel like it, there's no way that's going to be that would be cheap. And at a place like when you go to like bars and restaurants and stuff like that, they don't have like that many employees or anything like that. So I feel like, or some have like restaurants have a lot of employees like coming in yeah. every night. Like you've got a different like 50 people working there. Like to have to cover all those people would be extreme. If they did something like if you worked 40 hours a week, you got it. Like that'd be an awesome thing to do for people who are there. Right. Like, full time but yeah I, I think it's a, I, I personally think it would be a very like how you were saying mm -hmm. a lot of the restaurants and bars are living day to day or month right. to month but a, thing, a lot so. of it too is hours so you know in order to have insurance you have to work a certain amount of hours and a lot of times there's not even enough hours just because the restaurant's slower or there's just not enough yeah. shifts to make your hours I know uh, I was at Ruth's Chris for 15 years and that's a big company and so I had insurance 401k the whole thing but when I started in the wine industry I was doing two jobs full time and I ended up giving up a lot of shifts there so I I lost my insurance. Oh. Uh, yeah, I know one restaurant too that does allow insurance. Uh, Alejandro, what about your week? Lady, you had an event last night too and you're here. Didn't you every Sunday night now? No, I, it's starting next Sunday. Starting next Sunday. Oh, it's starting yeah, next yes. Sunday. So we will not expect to see you next Monday? Yes, you will. Oh. I'll be hangover, but oh. I'll be here. You know. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, I'm, putting, I'm putting together an event for, um, luckily Richard told me I could do Sunday Pride at the Brass Rail. Oh. So I'm putting together an event that it's, I, I don't know, like Saturday I got really frustrated when I got here because Richard told me he has an event going on until 10. On Sunday? On that same Sunday. Pride? So I kind of got a little frustrated because we had talked about this before and he said, no, you can start at 9. <laughs> I love that she just lays it out on the table. Too. <laughs> well, like, you know, this was my problem. Politically yeah. No, well, he said, you know, you start at 9 and then for 9 you get the door and yeah. do whatever. So I planned oh. everything around it and I already put a, a show together, everything, which is going to come down to almost $1,200 to just for entertainment because I'm going to have a live band and this person I bring that works in Mexican television and all that stuff oh. and so Telenova. now he's telling me <laughs> that I'm getting from 10 and after that you know so I'm thinking oh my god what am I going to do so is it a guarantee thing you are doing a pride event yeah I am doing it on, the hey, on Sunday of pride yes. and then I'm working on like my cousin's having her quinceanera next month they oh. put it together in three weeks yeah. So I'm teaching them the waltz and the surprise dance and everything. So it's just like a lot. Three of weeks. That's a short amount yeah. of time. But you know what? Within a week, they already got the the, the waltz all together and everything because they're doing Beauty and the Beast. Are you making her quinceanera dress? No, I'm making her her surprise dress. Have you ever made a quinceanera dress? I'm actually for an adult? making somebody the dress for the first July the first. I'm making somebody's quinceanera uh, dress. So. What's oh. the surprise dress? It's like uh, she's gonna dance Roxanne. <laughs> so you should take something surprise. off as a yeah, surprise. No, no, no. She's gonna dance on, you know, a tango Roxanne, and we're mixing it with Candyman, Christina Aguilera. Oh, so she's that's gonna, neat. Yeah, she's gonna do like that fifties puffy skirt, but before yeah. she's wearing the tango dress and all that stuff. So. Oh, we're excited! I'm excited. I'll be here on Pride. Yeah. Definitely. So when we're gonna. Pride? What's that? When is Pride? Pride is the sec the twentieth, the weekend of the twentieth, twenty first, twenty second. Yeah. It's like a week before Comic Con this year too, so oh, it's uh, good because it's usually like you yeah, know no you hotel. have a crossover. Yeah, yeah. The gays and the nerds crossing over. But it's over. coming it's soon, no so we're gonna the take a break and, and we will be right back.
We are back. Uh, Dustin, your hat. I think you should put your hat on. <laughs> Just kidding. Oh, I'm not wearing my glasses. I can't see what that says. Um, so, I don't know what... Ophelia arrived. <laughs> so none of us have any idea I'm what's getting, going on. I'm getting acting notes. So yeah, I'm, not, right? I'm not presenting well, apparently. Uh, uh, <laughs> that that? Where wow. something that shows your boobs or something. Is that, that what she is? said? I don't have any boobs. That's the problem. Oh my goodness gracious. <laughs> Um, something came out in the news today, I find this very interesting, because we have a professional educator on our panel, I think this is a very interesting topic to talk about. Um, we have numerous times addressed the whole bullying issue kind of thing here. Something came out of Texas today, and a school teacher um, had this, uh, one of her students was an accused bully. So she brought the, the student up into the front of the class and had the whole entire class hit the guy twice. Oh, wow. To teach him a lesson on how it feels to bully somebody. She has been terminated and <laughs> let go of her job. Yeah. I would imagine. Well, yeah. and I don't know like how the hits were. I don't know if they were like, like me. <laughs> 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 okay. Or if they were like this or whatever. You know what I mean? I think it was more of getting, I was that, it was that point of, yeah. I'm making an example of the, you right now in front of everybody else this is what it feels like when you're doing it to this one person you know so I mean what are you guys' thoughts on I think name calling would have worked better Say you, you, think, word. you think name calling would have been more appropriate yeah I mean, not that it's right, but I think they, yeah. instead of hitting them, you know, just say something. It doesn't make sense. Did, did the teacher see the kid bully someone? I believe so. Class? And then she's like, okay, you want to feel it, what it's like, buddy? Yeah, I, was, I, I do wow. think there's a level of frustration. I mean, even yeah. in high school, because you know what's going on. Yeah. Well, you got 45 kids times, in a class. Yeah, and a lot of times the kids, even, well, especially high school, they don't want to come back and say, like, we fight this niche mentality. I'm not going to tell you. I'm not going to tell you what happened because they don't want to get that person in trouble and make it worse for themselves. Yeah. So a lot of times the teachers know that something's going on, and it gets very frustrating on that end too because it's kind of like, yeah. well, I, I feel like I got to do something, but I can't really nail this kid because it's a lot of those bullies are real good at what they do. So I, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm not supporting the teacher. Right. <laughs> Maybe that's a good I, idea. Texas thing. But I can see where the frustration. Yeah. Well, I went, to school, in Texas, they didn't I went to school in Texas for one, <laughs> right? for one year when it's I was a kid. Texas background. One year we lived in Texas, and the school, the, the teachers, there was a, a paddle on the wall with holes in it. The teachers could paddle the kids. So. Well, that and that's, it's funny because that's what they used to do. Yeah. Like, yeah when my parents were growing up, that's well, what the punishment was. And my like, husband, growing up in Montana, they they had that. Paddled. Yeah. yeah. I feel like there's really like do even though that happened like like it's super extreme or anything like that but I I just feel like that's not even going to solve the problem with that teach kid. Anything. That kid's yeah. probably still going to bully people. Like someone who is in that type of mindset who's going to be a bully and everything like that is a different like they've got something different and they need to get it like worked out which through something maybe like therapy or something like that because there's a deeper problem than them just like wanting to act tough like there's well, something else in especially because now his mom's going to step up because yeah, exactly. as a mother yeah. would and say that's not right you, you can't do that to my kid and now it's yeah. in a sense validating you know oh yeah see you can't do that back to me and so even yeah, if there was a lesson to be learned it's not going to well, what yeah. is that teaching the other kids that if you get bullied it's okay just to do hit it back, someone right yeah, yeah. yeah. That's well, bizarre. but I do, like you were saying, like therapy, but I do think it's at a point too where there's some, like, as you were saying, the teacher, like, people are probably getting frustrated with how do we handle this with these kids. And sometimes it's like, and I'm, again, I'm not also condoning this, <laughs> but I mean, you have to sometimes make a point and, like, reverse it and let these kids know, hey, this is what it's like, yeah. you know, to do it. And are you in San Diego? You were San Diego when uh, I know. Well, no, I'm, Spr I'm Spring Valley. But. Now, because I know San Diego has a huge, like, anti bullying. Uh, yeah. initiative thing that just goes on through the school districts. How does like like other schools handle? But you remember when we talked about that paper when we did that experiment yeah. that they did in New York that you know that was a good example. Good point. What was that? That was the lesson. How was that again? It was like a teacher <laughs> told like all the kids to wrap the paper and like make it like into a bunch or whatever and then they try to like spread it back even um, again and then you know that's what bullying those people. Yeah. Which is an interesting exercise. Oh, see, you learned something yeah. from me, 
Okay, so along those lines now, there's another mom who, oh, and for the record, this class, I didn't want to tell you guys the age because I wanted to see like what you thought if it would be better for a different age bracket or whatever, but these were six-year-olds. Uh, oh, I was going to assume it had to be little kids. Yeah, like, these were six-year-olds. Why would you, six-year-old doesn't even know what he's doing yeah. at that point. Like. Most like well, you know what they start like that, and they're oh, he doesn't know what he's doing. It's he's true. just playing. Yeah, but I mean that's when you that like mentality. That when they're yeah. that young is when you can sit them down and give them a stern talking to, and it actually like affects them more than like a thirteen-year-old kid who like I would have is going to be set. Motherfucker, you can't do this shit. <laughs> I'm getting fired anyways. <laughs> I think there is like a, a personality type that senses weakness and preys on that you yeah. know though so I don't know that I don't know that a certain talking to and sometimes those are the people that wind up being fantastic businessmen or you know yeah. you know what I'm saying because it's it's an aggression it's and it you know um, it's huh. not channeled right so I, I don't know how to channel it differently so you're not a bully in school but Just send them off straight to law school yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're going you're, you're law school material yeah but do schools do okay so like you say like you can see these you like you can see the patterns in a kid. You can see their personality and know, like, oh, this is going to be, this is a person we need to watch out for. Do they actually in schools, like, teach, like, any kind of anti-bullying exercises or, like, you know, like in Mean Girls, when after the bullying thing, and they had all the girls in the auditorium and they do trust exercises? No? No? Okay. But do they do, like, exercises in school? Yeah, we, well, actually, what my district runs uh, something called Camp Lead, which is, uh, it's all of your leaders on campus. So even your non-traditional leaders, we try to send them. So the, so the kids that have a voice with other kids, so even if it's doing bad things, but they have a voice with other kids, we take them to a camp, it's like three days, and they spend time talking about stereotypes and what makes you the same as other kids, and they meet um, students from other schools oh, in the wow. district. Um, and they spend a lot of time talking about what mistakes they've made in the past and how they're, you know, similar to, you know, you think you're the only student that your that's family um, lost their house, and then you see, oh, you know, there's all these other kids that are, have also been homeless for a period yeah. of time, or, you know, have had to wear hand-me-downs and felt bad about it, you know, what whatever it is. So that's kind of our. Uh, interesting. That's cool. Is now is Camp Lead is Camp Lead a is it just for your school district or is it an actual like uh, is it like a national program or? Uh, no, right now it's just our district, um, but I think it is based on some other programs that are yeah. that happen around the country. So it's not it's not um, something unique to the Grossmont district. But uh, the question. Yeah, do you, do you guys, like, how do you guys deal with, um, like, do you in your school? I mean, I don't know, Spring Valley, I'm, like, a little, hmm. But do you guys have, like, I know you have LGBT. Well, I know you have LG, LGB. Do you guys have T, too, like, trans and? Not. We have students that we kind of look at and go, that's headed that direction. But you don't, you know, obviously you don't want to stereotype yeah. and assume that that's what's going to happen. But um, Camp Lead has a, has a large amount of kids that um, decide they're coming out right then and there. That you know, yeah. But then it's, it's staff members from every school site go too. So we're all there to like, okay, support you and help you. Okay, what can I help with with your parents? You don't want to tell your dad. Okay, what can I do? And it's not like, oh, I'm going to call your dad and be like, oh, right. guess what? Right. You know, but um, just huh. to be supportive of that as well and and there's definitely kids that you, you go oh, I think you're headed transgender very soon but yeah. not quite yet <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. But, I, but I don't I think that to them thinking yeah. about that in high school I mean I did dress up once but that was it that's why I actually kind of high school. <laughs> I used to dress up all the time at, at my house alone in my mom's clothes I went to and a, dance to Madonna. I went to a dance at the convention center in, in oh. Dragon. I was 16 or 17 and I ran into some people from school. So. <laughs> and it, they were quite sure with me because I was wearing this big hair and all that. So. Yeah, we, we try one step at a time. So yeah. we're okay. <laughs> we Big hair, cha-cha heels, and all kinds <laughs> and stages. <laughs> That's cool. I think Camp Leach should be like a, I like that program. Yeah, I think it's something cool. that could be modeled after, like in a lot of districts. Actually, I wish it was there when I was a kid. Yeah, again, it's money. So. Yeah, yeah, of course. If you hear of a program, Camp Lead, Camp Lead, support it. <laughs> um, so okay, now along those lines, what I was going to say is, there's another woman who has a young son. Uh, and I think he was like, he's under 10, I know that. He was bullied, 
uh, because he had big ears, and I. But I saw the I saw the pictures, and he had really big ears. <laughs> <laughs> well, he did have big ears. <laughs> right, let's be honest. Alejandro's got big boobs. <laughs> but I never she, But he was constantly tormented because of his big ears. Yeah. She had uh, plastic surgery done. And the ears were reduced, and he was on an interview on like uh, 2020 or something, and was like the happiest kid in the world because these big ears were gone. Uh, and she's switching him to a new school. That's good. That's awesome. You think? Yeah. yeah if it, it's come to something where they're getting bullied over it, like as much as like that sucks, you know what I mean? To be bullied yeah, over, yeah. like yeah. over how he's looking. But if, yeah, something stupid like that, like where it's just the way someone looks, and they, no one should be treated like that or anything. But if it's got to the point where it's like that hard for him to like go to school and everything like that, like why not make his? If, if you can afford that, why not make his life easier? Like. So you you think it's better? I mean, you don't see any difference in doing that, like with the ladies from the, or do you see a difference with the ladies like toddlers and tiaras kind of thing? That seems different. different. Th- that is. Yeah, a- I don't see the difference between getting braces for a kid versus yeah. you know getting yeah, but you know, no, but, because hey, my teeth are you know it's bothering but see, me. But the, the 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 other thing that toddlers and tiaras is totally different. Huh. Because it's, it's not about their self-esteem. It's about them wanting their kids to be in this pageant. Yeah. Like actually forcing them They're to be They're giving their toddlers pageant. plastic surgery? No, no people are. Yeah. People do yeah. for these pageants, yeah. yeah. But they? that's like so for... But they also say that when you put your... Be. They also say when you're putting... That they're putting... Because I watched this documentary on Lisa Ling. And they said that when you're putting your kids in these pageants is to boost their self-esteem. Well, maybe or, maybe originally, but esteem. like I feel like the ones who were like on that show and like that extreme, it's past like the boosting of self esteem part, and it's more of just like the parents almost like yeah. pushing for it. Like yeah, and then like they turn into this big bitches thinking that they can do whatever the hell they want and they're so pretty. And hmm. Yeah, <laughs> naturally obsessed yeah. with their kids' success. Yeah, and like with, yeah, it's. I don't. Hmm. It's totally different than getting it done. You, for have, you clearly have a problem with the ears. Yeah. What do you think about the ears? Yeah, what? about having like a. As How old was the kid? I, I, he was under ten. He was young. He was young. Well, I mean, if he was getting ten years old and he's coming home in tears because the kids are bullying him and it's that easy to fix and the doctor said it's fine, it's not going to harm him. Then I, I don't see any harm in it. it. Made the kid's life easier. Then I'm all for it. Hmm. Except now he's been on the news for getting the child well, surgery. Yeah, so that's, see, at, some school, point, and the kids like, at some point, I think you yeah. got to protect a child. I don't feel like he yeah. should have been on the news. Yeah. That's not fair. Kind of cancels no. out the whole thing. Yeah. Right. But I also think that... <laughs> um, like, uh, you were born beautifully. Yeah. No, I was not. I was no. bullied. I was actually oh, yeah. bullied born in middle what? school. Uh, because I was the shortest kid in the class. <laughs> really? Isn't that where we got? I was late the, bloomer. I was the I was a very late bloomer. I went through puberty like between my sophomore and junior year that summer. I like, but I was I was bullied in middle school for being like the shortest kid in the class. Hello. So I was picked on. <laughs> yeah, I was picked on. I had big buck teeth, which I still have big buck teeth. He uh, down. Yeah, right. But I mean, I just kind of feel like. At the same, I mean, as rough as that was, I feel like I, it was like a life lesson, like everything we go through, that's, you know, that's a hard thing for us, like we learn from it, and I think at such a young age, I, I, life is not like that, you can't always correct something, as much as I don't agree with bullying, I mean, I, I, I'm like, I hate bullying, but Oh, I, I kind of feel like that's taking an easy way out where it's like, you know, but then on the flip side, it's like, well, kids are committing suicide, so yeah. it's like, yeah, you know, but I think there's ways around it other than the plastic surgery. So, what do you think? We're going to take a break. <laughs> Okay, so moving on to the next topic, um, and this was something that I guess happened last week, which is interesting. Um, I, I actually thought at first it was like a joke kind of like oh, headline yeah. because it basically says that Indiana, um, which is like I was gonna say something about Midwest, but I'm not quite sure if that's Midwest. <laughs> so it's Midwest. Midwest sort of. It's Midwest. Yeah, it's pretty Midwest. Um, but Indiana apparently has legalized. Um, 
uh, shooting cops in the sense of if they are doing an unlawful intrusion into your home. So it is now legal for a person to fire. It doesn't just say home. It's un. Uh, it's like an unlawful intrusion of property. So hmm. that includes like the yard, a car, or something like that. Like. Which is insane. It's like, I read through the article and like, there's one cop who talks at the end, he's like, I'm going to get shot walking up to someone's car and they're going to be able to say like, oh, well he was unlawfully trying to get into my property. Like, someone, like a cop could die because of this and get away with it. Like, the person could get away with it. Like, I don't, there, I, it shouldn't be legal in my mind to shoot anybody. Like, I don't understand, like, why, like, that's legal, let alone, like, shooting any person. Like, I don't care if it's your property or anything. Like, if someone, except for when you're defending yourself, like, that's the only reason. But at the same time, if you go above and beyond, like, what they're doing to you, if you're not, like, in fear of your own life and everything, that's still, like, there's the law for that. And you will, like, pay for that. But that's just, it's insane to me. I don't know. I, just, I was just watching the news. Something like in Texas, there was this this guy was raping this guy's daughter, and he came and he killed the guy before he got to rape her. So to me, that's justified, you know. Yeah, but that's different. That's you're not talking about a police officer. Yeah. You're talking about no, an but intruder. When saying, like, yeah. It's not okay to kill. Like, uh, I don't, I'm but not but at the, any point. there are like I do think there are like those extreme times yeah. where it's like necessary, but I still don't think it should be like. There should, it still needs to get looked into. There's no law that should say, like, yeah, it's okay. You, yeah, exactly. It's okay. This is why it's okay, and this is the circumstance. How do you it's look okay, into it? Because it's like a he said, she said thing, right? Well, and then one guy's dead, so. Well, I mean, there's, evi- you- there's people who are great at, like, looking at evidence and stuff like that and be able to figure out what happened. And like because certain, a cop isn't supposed to shoot to kill, yeah. right? If they have to shoot, they're unless mm. unless it, they're if, they're if, going to die unless someone's coming after them. It, if someone's shooting them, the cops are trained to shoot at mass, so they're trained to shoot at someone's at at their chest. Yeah, if someone's if someone's coming after them, they're right. they need to protect their yeah, lives. Right. You know what I mean? They're not shooting. To, they're never they're never shooting for anyone's head or anything like that. They're shooting for like the easiest spot to hit somebody, which is going to be like right around here or something like that they're obviously not going to aim for like a heart or head or anything like that but at the same time like they're not aiming for like fingers like because you're going to miss more often like that's why like when they train to shoot like they shoot at like a body and the targets right in the targets like right in the center yeah i and like i this i guess this also kind of goes with the whole gun right thing and the, whatever the right to uh have firearms and all that yeah. stuff which i don't know if i completely agree with that because i mean you and i both have family members yeah that are in law or yours was in law enforcement yeah i might have retired but yeah and i like, still i have like my sister and my brother-in-law are both la sheriffs and like my brother-in-law last year went through something like this and if that person had a gun i'm like my brother-in-law would have been dead at this moment because I mean the guy was cracked out and was a fucking mess. Yeah. You know, so it's like I I mean these people like our cops, I don't ah God, I don't our cops like are like these people in our society that and they're so not appreciated in the sense of like oh yeah they they put their lives on the line for our protection kind of thing. So I think that a stupid fucking state that is gonna allow people to like shoot them and kill them is lame. Lame. <laughs> <laughs> They're not going to have many cops in it. Well, it yeah. You're right? And it, it's interesting because stand your ground. Um, I, the one in Florida with the Trayvon Martin case is, um, I, I don't quite understand the logic behind that one. So it, it seems similar to me that, okay, so you're, you're going to make it, if these things happen, it's okay to shoot someone, it's okay to use deadly force. Like you were saying, right. and yeah. and you're setting up this parameter that all I have to do now is back up and say, well, I did, I did it because of this. Yeah. And I, I don't, and I'm I'm thinking of you know cops that go do welfare checks and stuff. Like somebody gets right. a prize. You, yeah. You're walking into a house and. Or or they have, or they have like a warrant to do like detectives to do a drug bust at a house. Yeah. And they come charging into a house with a warrant and drug dealers have like shotguns or something like that and now they're entitled to just shoot willingly at the cops. Oh, because they could honestly, like something that could happen, like even though they had a warrant, like, oh, like I thought it was a fake warrant. I thought they were unlawfully yeah. intruding into my house. Like it leads it open to way too many interpretations of something stupid. like... It's not okay to shoot anyway. I feel like we don't have the stupid. whole story here. Well, no, <laughs> and it's yeah. at the end of it... The law too, was proposed like four years ago. And 
it says at the end of it, it's just a recipe for disaster, says the Indiana State Fraternal Order Police President. So it's real. It's just they should all go strike and network and see where that's going to lead them to. Yeah, I mean, cops are there for a reason. Like they go through so much training. It's so selective. Like they are there. Uh, there still are like bad cops out there. I know that. Like, but I mean, there's bad they're people out there. You know yeah. what I mean? It's not like people have this weird misconception that like all cops are dicks because they pulled me over when I was going 90 on the freeway and gave me a ticket or like, <laughs> pulled me over when I was drunk and now I can't drive for a year. I'm like, really? Because you were the one doing something something wrong in this situation right, exactly. like it's just so unnecessary the way that like the stigma is for like different like people and it's just like putting something like that I just, it's just ridiculous to yeah. me like I think it's sad actually I think it takes away from our law enforcement and how important their jobs are and you know that's my thought yeah. on that so as much as some people hate them but we do have a producer question oh, tonight I'm excited about this and somebody's gonna read because the red is the, I can't read I can red read it. would you help a terminally ill friend or family commit suicide oh Dr. Kevorkian question <laughs> Whoa. oh so, would you help a terminally ill friend commit suicide I help him take the pills with their own hand. <laughs> I I don't think I would. I would. I can understand how someone could get to like that mindset where they know like they're dealing with so much and everything like like or they're in like an obscene amount of pain and. I can understand them getting that mindset of not wanting to be there. But there's no way I'd ever like be okay with helping one of my loved ones like not be there anymore. You know what I mean? Like. Whereas it's more like selfish for me personally because yeah. I still want them there, but like there's so there's no way I would personally like assist them. I in think that. there's are ways that you can inadvertently do it. Now, I, my grandfather just passed away in January. He was 96 years old, and his body was eating itself. He hadn't eaten food or drank water in 16 days, and uh, he was in you know he wasn't comfortable and he didn't want to take many things because he really just wanted to get out of there and he was afraid of dying. So he's just grasping on for everything. But he was in horrible pain. And at one point, the you know, I was just talking to the doctor, and I said, is there anything that we can do to help him from this pain? And he said, well, we can, but you know, ultimately it's going to kill him. He's going to die anyhow. He's in hospice. So it's whether you, you, know, you give him more pain medication now, and he goes a little easier, or you give him a little more. You, know, you, you don't give him some, and his body just eats himself until he dies do painfully. You, do you think, sorry to interrupt, but do you think that he was doing it, like him not eating or drinking water for 16 days, do you think he was... Doing he it to himself. He, he, there was nothing left of his body, so if he drank water, it went right into his lungs. There was just nothing uh, left of him. Uh, he was like, it was like looking at a hmm. living corpse almost. So, you know, my brother and I talked to the doctor, my my grandmother, my uncle, my mom, they weren't willing to say anything. They were just there, and it was awful. My brother and I talked to the doctor and said, well, let's help. You know, let's let's help him move on, because the people, the doctor explained, he deals with dying people every day, that people are either go dying, you know, grasping for every breath miserably, or they go peacefully. Yeah. And, and I was just our intention for him to go peacefully. He was never, he was never a miserable man. Yeah. And and he did go peacefully, you know, shortly after that. What do you think, Jamie? Days. There's some family members that aren't going to get a choice. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Every no, Thanksgiving, I'm going to be Don't watch this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I think I would, because I, because same thing. I mean, I, you know, I'm watching. You my think you I, would? I think I would. Um, it it would. I mean, it would depend on the circumstances and all of that. But it yeah. would be more like what you're talking about with. Um, yeah. Hey, is there is there a morphine push we can do? Is there you know is there anything that's like I wouldn't want to go way outside of like I wouldn't want to yeah. do yeah like uh, fiction in the chest with heroin yeah. or anything like that. But I mean, yeah. <laughs> See, that's what, like, when I'm thinking, like, the way I took it was someone who had, say, like, cancer mm -hmm. that was uncurable. So it's not someone who is in hospice, like, plugged in or something like that, but someone who knows, like, they want to, like, they want to die before they're in all that yeah. pain or something like that. Like, and in that situation, like, I wouldn't, I, I, I'm not going to help someone, like, yeah. kill themselves. Like, I understand, like, I understand it and everything like that, and I wouldn't, like, look down on them for it by any means, but I just, like, there's no way I would, like, personally, like, assist them. Alejandra? I'm, I'm, I'm thinking like, like, for the most, like, when people get, like, uh, uh, on the age stage already and 
yeah. everybody's trying to fight to stay alive you know and I think that would be their last resource you know that they're already done everything that they could try to fight it and yeah. you know they're just like like did you say like a morphine push or something you know just you know let them go peace yeah I know and I don't think like I I mean and I'm looking at it like the, like AIDS epi epidemic and all that and I'm really I'm like okay like how can I like you know like see and that's like what I've seen in the past through friends that have passed away um, and I don't like I don't know when you see somebody that's at that point I as much as I want to help them and fulfill that wish I don't want it to be like there's legal ways of yeah. doing things and I as much as I love like uh, friends I would not put myself in that situation I would do everything I would do the thing like oh you don't want to take your meds well, don't take your meds like it's like that's not my problem, you know what I mean but if a person is on that last wish and like you know if a person going to survive or not. I'm like, I would do it legally. I would not do it illegally. And yeah, unless they were like crazy. Crazy cry. Cry cry. If they were cry cry, I wouldn't I'd help. take it to the bridge and let here. Yeah, <laughs> okay. You know, I'll, I'll drive you to the suspension bridge. So, I don't know what he's holding up. <laughs> I can't it see. Our, it was our they said flood. Oh, uh, for some reason I can't see anything tonight. I don't know what the problem is. I cannot see any of it. I it's need like start... staring into the sun. Yeah, I think the lights are extra it bright is a, It is a little bright. Is it what it is? Great, we're all going to be pale. No, but it's, it's when, when you have like light pigmentation on your yeah. eyes, it's harder. I'm going to wear my Lunar Eclipse Club. Seriously. Yeah. Um, okay, so events coming up. First of all, the Amazing High Heel Race was this past Saturday. I was not able to make it, um, and that was a big drama. <laughs> so I apologize. Um, but I do know uh, some friends of mine won Mr. Mike Rutherford, Jay Gray, and Dallas Pugh. I don't know how to say Dallas's last name. But apparently, I have no experience, and they won it all. And they actually looked really hot in their outfit. Outfits too, so the bravo yellow. to them. Cool. Yeah, they were like, yeah, I, I love those that. boys. They're do fun. Do you know how much money they raised? I have no idea, but I do know I paid a registration fee. So. Oh, okay. I'm, com <laughs> I'm comfortable with that. I did my part. Um, Saved a pair of shoes. Yeah, uh, I, you know that was a thing. I didn't have shoes <laughs> that I could run in, and then I like it was just a long. It's drama. It's drama. <laughs> but a missing uh, Amber Alert was filed and everything. So. I'm right here. Yeah, it was crazy. Um, and then. Also coming up are the Nikki Awards in August, but nominations are open until the end of next week. So go online to the Nikki Awards.com go and, and nominate, they said, for yeah. online media. Or, you know, yeah, why not? I mean, we won't win, but why not? <laughs> <laughs> for the hell of it. We were nominated last year. We were nominated we were last year. Fans. And you were nominated last year yeah. for, like, trans. Yeah. Hey, lady, have you ever won it? It's my second year being what's, nominated. What's the oh, really? nomination? Trans what? Trans Transsexual. Trans something out with the entertainment. Yeah. Interesting. Um, and then also, uh, AIDS Walk is in September on the 30th, and registrations have begun. Does your school have a team for AIDS Walk? Dolores, are you listening? <laughs> or Dr. Jacob, sorry. <laughs> Does, um, I'll you know? take it. I'm sure that the um, Gay Straight Alliance would love to know about it. Seriously. And I happen to be the team's I need coordinator. To take it right now, because school's almost out. Oh, that's or true. at the beginning of September. So. Oh, I'll give you a business card after this. Okay. Honestly, it is the it is the largest single HIV AIDS fundraiser in San Diego County uh, that benefits like 15 different organizations. So it's great, and teams from all over, like high schools, uh, elementary school, um, all kinds of teams are forming. And uh, registration is open at AIDSWalkSD.org. Um, and then also for the center is on July 1st the YPC, which is the Young Professionals Council. Uh, champagne community champagne brunch at Wang's, cool. which is going to be very exciting. It's forty dollars for unlimited mimosas and all you can eat. I think it's all you can eat, but that's uh, then. And then, uh, yeah, you had me at mimosa. Yeah, right. <laughs> all you can drink there. Uh, but forty dollars, and it goes towards the center, so it's exciting. Events for you guys. I'm just starting my Sunday. This night. Sunday. And it's not a Latin night. It's a mix of music, house, hip hop, Latin, everything. I'm good. Yeah. Maybe I'll... Well, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> well, that sounds it's Sunday promising. night, girl. It's Sunday night. Well, the show starts at 9.30, and it's over by 11, so... Hmm. 
Maybe I'll come this Sunday. I feel like I have something to do Sunday. Amber? I don't have any personal events coming up. I did go to the Lafayette Pool today, and they have a DJ there, so thank yeah. you. Hello. I'm going to show a little cleavage. Yeah, Junior, uh, DJ yeah. Junior. That's my wife. Our, That's a tag. Yeah, our Monday, <laughs> our Monday night DJ, DJ is the one who uh, organizes and throws yeah. those parties. It was pretty cool. It cost $5 to get in. I didn't know. I just went with a friend. We just wanted to get All a little right. sun. Right. Then we got there. I was like, uh-oh, yeah. are we even going to get in? I thought it was a private party, and uh, it was good crew. It was like all mostly restaurant people. It was $5. It was groovy music. Yeah. And yeah. uh, it was a really a lot of fun. So I guess they do it Saturday, Sundays, and Mondays. Five bucks. Yeah. You know, see me there a lot. All so summer long, too. Yeah. It's all summer long. Yeah. It's exciting. Yeah, the Monday one, we've got one of our bartenders and our um, oh. our two DJs. Both all, all work over there Monday and Monday. Oh, Monday really? Night. Yeah. Oh, God, that's a long day. Oh, yeah, it's a really long day for them. And there are plenty of gays there, all kinds. Uh, Lots of guys. Uh, <laughs> and they're like $60 swim trunk things that look like that underwear. They don't it's like rough skin or, yeah. They like, don't want to get into the water because it's going to get the a bunch of lesbians like on their rafts that don't want to get their mohawks wet. I went ahead first. It's supposed to be a fun. I will not go because I will not take my shirt off in front of all them. Really? Got, no, of course, course not. What's going of course on with, not. Your, um, with your bike run? So anyway, Jamie was <laughs> fabulous <laughs> having you. I did that, girl. That was a couple weeks ago. Wow, Where were you? Really? We talked about it. Yes. I wasn't here, remember? Uh, uh, we, it was fabulous having you. Thank you for having Good luck that. this weekend. <laughs> Thank you. Have fun in Vegas. Vegas. Get through Thursday. Yeah. Get through Thursday. Where are you staying in Vegas? Church. We're going to go yeah. Golden Nugget. Sweet. So we've been staying downtown because I can actually like play a blackjack table. Get a $5 and not have to pay table. $25 yeah. down on a hand. Yeah. yeah so that's so like Downtown, it. though, is supposed yeah. to be up and coming in Vegas. It's and fun. there's a new place that's called, what's the name of it, Aaron? It's um, where Justice Works now. Oh, Dragon. Uh, uh, new dra yeah, it's a, there's a new like bowling alley club, and it's all drag queens that work at it. And then, well, I should say female impersonators because these are like women. drag queens. Yeah, That's fun. Uh, whatever. So yeah, <laughs> so. I like to get makeup tips. <laughs> <laughs> We'll talk. So we are once again here at the fabulous Brass Rail, and we appreciate them on a weekly basis. That's right, Dustin, and we will see you all next week.